Dan hari ini Pemerintah Kabupaten Bekasi Akan membongkar Gedung Yang sudah kami bangun Indonesia has long been praised for its remarkable transformation from dictatorship to democracy and for its long tradition of religious pluralism and religious freedom. It is the largest Muslim-majority nation, but its tradition of religious freedom and pluralism is increasingly under threat from radical Islam, which is affecting all people in Indonesia. It is affecting Christians. Many churches have been closed or harassed. It is affecting the Ahmadiyya community, which has been severely persecuted and victimized. It is affecting the Shia, and it's affecting the majority moderate Muslims who don't like intolerance. And so we believe that there is an urgent need for action against what is undermining all that Indonesia has achieved. That for a long time, we lived together among Muslim, Christian, Hinduism, and Buddhism with uh, harmony. We have experience about that. It's a big capital of Indonesia. But since last 15 years, there is a dispute to start from uh, radical one, fundamentalist one, who comes from abroad. It comes to Indonesia, try to change the Muslim in Indonesia instead of become, uh, instead of become a really Muslim, but become a Arab people. This is uh, the big problem now that makes so many violence, many uh, uh, church attack, the minority attack, not only religious but also culture, a certain culture. Um, yes, on 21 March hmm. this year, uh, the government destroyed uh, our new building. We have uh, processing our permit in this town. Uh, the new building um, just uh, by stone up to five meters around uh, this old church, old, old building, yeah. and um, they broke the new building and not destroy uh, to the old uh, building. Yeah. Yes, um, some of them is from um, government, they are um, policemen, they are satpol PP. There are also many intolerant people uh, came here and also um, s uh, quite sound to say uh, destroy the building, destroy this building because there's not a uh, permit here. Mm. Um, 2011, uh, two years ago, on June, we have uh, start our uh, pro processing to get permit from government. Mm. We have uh, complete the signature or the permit from the people around uh, from this church, and also um, take uh, their picture and make the uh, surat pernyataan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a confirmation. <coughs> Letter of confirmation. Letter of confirmation, and they uh, have signature mm. uh, on it. And this is the problem. The village, uh, our village leader, of, uh, 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 give, um, uh, not give us the permit uh, because I think this is my um, opinion because uh, he is afraid for the intolerant people. Mm. So I know uh, he is the victim too. 
On 12th of September, 2010, as we were walking towards the place where we were holding our Sunday service, Muslim fundamentalists came on eight motorcycles armed with knives. We tried to protect each other. They stabbed one of our elders because they hate Christians. As we were taking the elder to the hospital, the man who knifed the elder attacked me. He hit me in the face and three times on my back with a wooden plank. There were no police at the time of the attack. I was later told that I was the target. I still feel traumatized about the situation. This building is not the church. It is a school. Yeah. So when we use this building, this property for worship in every Sunday, they prohibit us yeah. because we, we don't have a... You know, a Legally, it is not a church, so we can use it uh, for a church. The Ahmadiyya community has existed in Indonesia since 1925 and has approximately 500,000 members. Historically, they have faced relatively few problems, but since 2005, Ahmadis have faced an increasing campaign of harassment, discrimination, and violence. On May 5, 2013, a mob attacked an Ahmadi community in Kampong Wawarigi Tazak Malaya Regency. No one was injured, but 29 houses, the madrasa, and the elementary school were attacked. The main target was the mosque. Before this incident, my children slept separately, but now they sleep together because they are afraid. I do not feel safe. I just need one thing. I want to feel safe. Uh, we want uh, to let uh, the other know is that we are not safe any longer in our own uh, place, in our own houses. We are not free to believe in what we want to believe. But uh, and uh, I wish, and this is the only wish that we can live uh, in peace and safe and we can uh, we believe in what we want to believe. This. In 2013 an Ahmadi mosque was forcibly closed and sealed in Bakasi, a suburb of Jakarta, with approximately 20 Ahmadis refusing to leave. The police say they just maintain security, but in fact, they are spying on us. They write and record reports about whatever we did. They forbid people to come, including our lawyer. We never did any improper activity here. We just pray here and provide education of Ahmadi children. This is the real picture of Indonesia, where the government cannot guarantee the right to practice our religion and faith. Even though we have the Constitution and law, the government cannot guarantee our freedom. This is the weakness of our country, because we do not have a strong leader who cannot make any decisions. The local government is also powerless. That is why we are attacked again and again. So we want to tell the world that our country is plagued by intolerance. But we are very worried uh, the increase of the intolerance group. And to myself, the reason why we are afraid because our government seems very weak and not have a strong policy to defend them, uh, to, to, to give a clear policy to them. But they are very afraid to defend the right of uh, our, our religious belief. It is a different side with uh, what the constitution says. I still think uh, we are dreaming that we can live together. Uh, negatively, it is a sign that we are not part of Indonesia. But positively, it is a sign also that we still should contribute more honestly, you know, to build this country. Not only use Indonesia as place of worship, and we didn't do anything for the sake of Indonesia. Yeah. So, spiritually, it is a sign for us that we should uh, yeah, pay the price of our cost of discipleship. Mm. Yeah. I have no problems with ordinary Muslims, 
but when I see people dressed in an Arab way, with a long beard and the mark of FPI on their forehead, it affects me. I preach forgiveness, and I must forgive them, but it is not easy. I hope you are here not only to hear our stories, but to do something, to make change. There is no religious freedom here anymore. The situation in Indonesia is very sad. Our government does not stand for the truth. This is my right to worship, my basic human right. Why can't I have the right? I feel like a guest in this country. In the Constitution, there is no minority and majority. I feel like I'm in another country here. This country was colonized by the Dutch with tanks and bombs. Now my Indonesian brothers are colonizers, coming with equipment to kill my rights and destroy my faith. Law and justice do not work here. We hope the international community will give a strong warning to the president that there is a big problem in Indonesia. As this film has shown, Indonesia's tradition of religious freedom and harmony is increasingly under threat. It is time for the Indonesian government to take action to protect vulnerable religious minority communities, to bring the perpetrators of violence and hatred to justice, uh, and to ensure that the rule of law is upheld and religious freedom protected. The international community must also act by putting pressure on the Indonesian government to take those steps. And all of us can play our part by putting pressure on our own governments to pressure the Indonesian government to protect religious freedom for all in Indonesia. And as Christians, we also uh, must pray for persecuted Christians in Indonesia and for other vulnerable religious minorities so that all in Indonesia can enjoy the religious freedom that we enjoy. Okay. The last part, the Christian part, if you want to go again. Okay. As Christians, we have a responsibility to pray for those who are facing persecution in Indonesia, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, but also for uh, other communities that are facing similar injustice and discrimination and persecution so that all of the people of Indonesia can enjoy religious freedom.